the city of the sun You could have stayed, it's only over when the day is done I never knew you was a runner, yeah And I mistook you for a son It don't matter what we think when it's all over Cause this is our last time Is it fun? Fun. Fun. <laughs> After me. Ready? Happy. Good. Happy. New. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Boom>. <laughs> Today is October 9th, 2024. It is 12.02 a.m. All right, so I have a couple of tweets to share with you. Um, I think they sort of random. The Sussexes are not doing anything right now, so I'm getting, you know, little things here and there. So some of them I've been piling up since over the weekend. I literally yesterday uh, finished edit whatever I recorded. I believe it was Saturday. I didn't record anything on Sunday, Monday, yesterday, nothing. Because I was focusing on finishing editing whatever I recorded on Saturday. And I did three videos straight up. And it went really quick recording, but editing, oh my goodness, took me forever. Especially the one with the son. I believe there were, was it Arthur, um, Arthur Edward, and uh, there's two other people that were on stage talking because almost everything that were coming out of their mouth were completely lies. So it took me a while to actually edit it because... I had to look for clips to back up some of the things that I rebuke of them. So luckily, I had the mindset when I started editing to do the last video first. That's the one I edit first. And then I did the first one that I recorded second. And then the last one was the second one that I edit um, because uh, it was uh, too much... <laughs> I'm glad I did it that way because I would have wasted so much time on the other ones. Anyway, so I have, let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Wow, 12. Exactly 12 to share with you. Some of them will go really quick, especially the first one. 
These are other things regarding politics and some, the first two here could have easily go on this one because they're a little bit about politics, but I'm not going to stay too long on them. All right. So let's look at the background of my channel and then go straight to Twitter. All right. 3,994 subscribers, new subscribers. Welcome. Estimate revenue, $48.66. All right. So I think this one is up to date. I fix this. I just want to make sure, okay, there's the green. That's all I'm looking for. I took care of this. I spoke about it in one of my videos, how YouTube was trying to mess up with some of my videos. They're leaning toward to demonetize the channel. That's the sense that I'm getting. All uh, right. Analytics. All right. 987 views in the last 48 hours. Please if you enjoy some of the things that I share with you, especially if you're not on Twitter, you are Harry and Megan's friends, this is the channel. I try my best to look for as many tweets to share with you. And then, you know, occasionally I will give you my opinion on some of the things that I share. All right. So that's that. Let's go on Twitter. This is the first one. The reason I put this here who knows, I may not do the second uh, recording, which is mostly politics, will be on App You Team Sussex. But this one I decided to put it because many times I spoke about um, either here on this channel or on App You Team Sussex, where pretty much almost any topic, the Sussex's related topics will be on App You Team Sussex and politics and you name it. But, um, I put this here because many times I spoke about where um, I said I think Kamala Harris has taken uh, a playbook out of Harry and Meghan's tactic of not dealing with the media and um, mainstream media that is because you could see how the mainstream media is blocking so much information that the public needs to know and then they elevate the Trump type of narrative and uh, sort of things. So Kamala Harris did not give as many interviews. As of now, I'm aware of three interviews she has given to mainstream media. The first one was with CNN. The second one, I believe, was MSNBC. And the third one was 60 Minute, was over the weekend. The only one I sort of listened to well, not really. I don't think I really listened to any of them because my mind I've already made. So I didn't really bother. You know, I don't even watch most of the news that's going on because my mind is already made up. Okay. So I'm just waiting for the time for me to do my early voting and get it out the way. So yeah, the main reason for sharing this is because, uh, this tweet is talking about how she's, uh, you know, taking her message to where uh, most people take their news, you name it, okay? So the last ma um, social media, I believe she gave, and I saw it flying around my timeline. Again, I still didn't listen. It's something about daddy. I think call her daddy, I believe they call it, that uh, podca podcast. But um, anyway, let's listen to this. I may not go on any of the comments. Let me just focus on this. This is from Wall Street Journal, okay? A murder on sort of paper. All right, Vice President Kamala Harris appeared on Call Her Daddy. So that's the one I was talking about. A hit podcast, especially popular with young women. Here's what the unorthodox interview says about her media strategy. So let's listen to this. This is like a minute, 59 seconds. And then I'll go to the next one. That Kamala Harris gave an interview to hit podcast Call Her Daddy, especially since she hasn't made regular national TV appearances. Okay, so she hit the thing that I've been saying. She hasn't really go to mainstream media. And I believe as well, either yesterday, she went on one of the talk shows. Okay, she went to one of the talk shows. Is it The View? Okay, so that's another thing that I saw flying over. Again, I didn't listen to it. Let's continue. But let's break down what this says about her campaign's unorthodox media strategy. First, both Trump and Harris face the reality that news consumers are getting their information from all sorts of places, including YouTubers, podcasters, and Instagram feeds. It's a reflection of today's fragmented media landscape. And so the Democratic nominee's strategy is to hit all sorts of audiences in the final weeks before Election Day, 
including podcasts they call her daddy. Her national TV appearances have been rare, though she's giving several big interviews this week, including her 60 Minutes hit. This can raise the stakes for each big interview, as it means she'll have fewer chances to crack the record. And Harris is also going straight to social media audiences. For instance, creators with large followings are invited to this year's Democratic National Convention. Trump has also used some of these same tactics. Though the former president makes regular TV appearances on Fox, he's also granted interviews to influencer Logan Paul and comedian Theo Vaughn. It may seem strange that Kamala Harris... Okay, it's starting all over again. All right. So I think the main reason for sharing this is because it's some of the things I realized a while back. And then there's this particular tweet is making reference to it. Okay, so that's that. Forget the comments. Let's go to the next one. This one has to do with Bojo, and it's one of the videos I did similar to App You Team Sussex, where Bojo was talking to what's her name, Kamala Tomney, or something like that. So that was one of the videos that I edit first. All right, let me pause. Okay, oh, so now there's two different. Okay, he went on LBC as well. When was this posted? The eighth, yesterday. So there's this one I sort of uh, recorded already on app Team Sussex. But anyway, let's get going. Okay, Boris Johnson, talk thanks. Harry and Meghan were marvelous. All right, so let's listen. This one I didn't listen to yet. Let's see. It's a minute and 12 seconds. Prince Harry, in an attempt to try and dissuade yes, him. Yes, it was a moment of the epic top. pomposity by me. Epic pomp. And I, so basically, I think, you know, so I get Harry in it. So it was, it's at the Africa Summit. This and he's, British, doing, he's, right? doing great, he's doing a great job. And I like him very, I mean, you know, and, and I like Meghan. I think she, and she was terrific. They came to a, um, a Commonwealth event. And they both did an absolutely bang up job on female education. She knew her staff. She, you know, she had all the statistics, and he was very good too. And I, I'd also seen him being very good at the Invictus Games. You know, he, the games he organised for disabled veterans, armed service veterans, and so uh, he was doing a numero at the Africa Summit, and he was again very good. And, and uh, he and I were together for a while on our own in in some of these little rooms at the hotel in Greenwich, and I. With with ineffable pomposity, and and I, I said, you know, I say, oh, I, you know, I say, Harry, do you, <clears throat> do you think you really need to, you and Megan, you know, go to California? Really, what? And 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 let's not forget, he's trying to sell his book, and it seems like the only thing out of his book he's talking about, from some of the clips that I see on my timeline, he's focusing on Harry and Megan. He thinks that will help him sell sell his book. Hey, whatever. And the other thing as well is that um, while the uh, the media was, you know, disrespecting him, his wife, all of the things that were going in the media, meanwhile, in the background, the family is trying to get him back. You know, they're so dishonest with the people. But let's continue listening. I'm afraid I didn't get anywhere. You got on the next plane. Yeah, I, mean, I did not avert an exit. You say that you... All right, let's not forget as well. He tried everything with the family. And w based on what we know now with the Sandrium Summit, all right, everything was already written for him. So they set out for him. They want him out. So he just stick with what they set out for him. All right, let me read this. Okay, it was a moment of epic pomposity. Boris Johnson reflects on a conversation he had with Prince Harry at the UK Africa Investment Summit where he tried to tap, okay, to stop Megxit. All right, let's see this one. This one I sort of covered it. OMG Kamala Tomney, KPPO is dumbstruck with the way Boris Johnson is praising Harry and Meghan. They were a national asset to the country. Prince Harry is a force for good. All right, 38 seconds. They did. They came to own an event we did for female education. They were brilliant, and she was particularly good and articulate and on it and on the detail. So you got on quite well. And with yeah, 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 yeah. I got on well with with, with both of them. And I also. <laughs> I like how he brush her off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me finish my story. Type of things. All right, let's continue. Worked with Harry when he did his Invictus Games yes. for disabled veterans in um, in the Olympic Park, and so in a sort of you know fit of pomposity. Um, I thought, you know, this national asset is, is leaving our country. Um, I think he's a force on the whole, uh, could be on the whole a force for, for good. I'm going to try and discourage him. And I, so I, I had a 
pathetic attempt at that. It didn't work. Prince Harry. All right. It's repeating. Right? Is and it? Meghan. Yeah, it's repeating. In my view, they, did, they came to an, an event we did for female education. They were brilliant. And she was particularly good and articulate and on it and on the detail. So you got on quite well and with them? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got on well with, with, with both of them. And I also... <laughs> yeah, it's playing over. Maybe when I started, I, got, I caught it in the middle. All right, so that's that. I covered this in another video on Arab Beauty in Sussex. So I'm not going to waste too much time on it. Next to it. All right, so this one I saw yesterday. And it's only 11 seconds, and it seems like they put it in slow motion, though. But the thing is that how, uh, what's her name? Oh, my God, Ford Fiesta. What's her name? What's her name? I really can't think of her name right now. But when I'm editing, um, oh, shit. Um, Ford Fiesta was, like, in a distance. I don't know what she was looking at, but she was completely distracted. And, uh, yeah, yeah. The host, I don't know who's that, was trying to shake her hand, but she was completely out of it. All right. The secret weapon doesn't even know what time it is or where she is or what's going on. This is how you do what you do this, apparently. All right. 11 seconds. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She's so distant. Wow very distance uh they would have destroyed megan for this omg yep mm -hmm. can you even begin to imagine how many articles there would have been per hour hmm. uh she was daydreaming about running over a peasant again. Uh, i don't want to talk about this i think there was uh, someone a police car who was uh, escorting her from something who hit somebody you know made that person rest in peace probably she's seeing the woman everywhere talk about going someplace to pose for a picture lol remember everything they accused megan is a projection <laughs> how embarrassing too busy posing for cameras i don't know something she was looking it's not like i'm making uh excuses for her i, I don't know I, I i just don't know you know why they sent you over there but wasn't even paying attention to the husband or anything so she was in the distance does she have dementia dear god even her husband just stood and looked at her instead of just touching her arm to make her aware i am laughing so loud here help mm -mm -mm. she was dying let's pause she was dying for the photo app the way they would have crucified megan and calling her attention seeker for this and whether or not the slurs they had in mind or mg the double standard are insane where this if people okay where this of people awkward through and through look like she was in la la land that i agree la la land for sure she was not even there body yes mind no totally off into other world can you just imagine if this was megan mm -hmm. all right so let's go to the next tweet there's more thing i don't want to add to her misery yeah you know when you do an engagement you know why you there. so focus on that for a few minutes and then get the hell out of there but she was out there somewhere la la land pretty much next to it the comment section of the daily fell has something to say about this also very interesting rebecca english is the author of this article a few years back she admitted to getting a telling off from william at a party and changing tune for more access uh, what is this about again? King Charles said to pause his cancer treatment for 11 days during... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. These people are making a mockery out of that. When there are so many people who's literally dying from that, but these people are making a mockery out of it. Thank God, knock on woods, I never experienced this. This is one thing I do not want to experience. How can you pause from what I've heard before you either continue with the treatment until it's completely gone how do you pause something and i i don't know i don't know all right king charles said to pause his cancer treatment for 11 days during high profile royal visit to australia and samoa later this month a rebecca english royal editor that was october 6. all right so these are some of the comments and there are part that are cut off Okay, Tidal Shoe said, Charles is going to holiday, having a winter vacation out of the British miserable weather. Tell us how the UK will. I better off in any way after his trip. I'll answer my own question. We won. 
he'll have just okay he'll have just okay a lot of things are cut off all right another wonderful break being waited on hand and foot all right i was thinking the same after my wife's chemo treatment all done within three months of her app it was a case of sad off and we will see you in a year for a checkup and three years on she still hasn't had a gp appointment about her cancer what a difference all right i don't think there is much enthusiasm down under for a king that is a head speaker for the wef his treatment will have concluded he's taking no risk and it is not the hero the male suggests okay or give it a break oncology nurse here you don't post treatment okay so that's that here yeah? you don't post treatment then go mangling with load of strangers that's how you die his treatment will have ended some time ago okay who knows maybe the men and grace would have some ideas for him all right for taking a break go mangle with people and come back okay go meet his mom okay i was wondering about that if it is still ongoing it's been months ago all right it is speculation that he has bladder cancer i don't understand why it is such a big secret it will be a boost for bladder cancer awareness treatment and research if he discloses which cancer he has anyone else find it strange that it's a it's a secret i don't know uh i can't imagine that it's going to be a good okay good on stopping his treatment for 11 days perhaps is worse than he is letting on and has i don't know what this word is that is not going to make any difference stopping treatment or 11 days mm. this is what i mean after i read this maybe men and grace would have a, a plan for him go do this and then when you come back you go meet your mom i don't know <laughs> i'm just saying all right let's pause this the shenanigans going on with that family is ridiculous i don't know what to believe anymore the daily barrage of palace sauce stories there's the rolling eye it's exhausting okay i always said there was more to that quick visit heavy made when charles illness was made public and no way he will dash across the ocean for a convo that could have happened over the phone no matter how nosy or leaky the palace staff is ain't no way yeah i think they call him at that time i think the male was really you know tr putting pressure on him to for harry to stop the how do you call this to stop the lawsuit because there's a lawsuit that's coming in january all right so the best thing to do was making it so drastic that he has cancer and then for him to dash over there and then remember at that time when harry went over there the story that was coming out of the uk um, when he got over there, he had the security to come and get him from the, um, how do you call this, from the airport. And then Charles wanted to take him someplace else. Okay, whatever palace he was in, Charles wanted him to go someplace else. But Harry said he had prior engagement, he cannot go. When I first recorded this, I was talking on top of my head based on memories. So as I'm editing this video, I'm looking for some of the things that I remember on top of my head to sort of back it up. And these are the things that I saw, that I found, that uh, Google had put. But the funny thing is, let's go on um, Google, the thing about him flying the reason he didn't stay at the place where Charles had offered him was due to the fact that the area was not secure. So Harry declined to stay at Buckingham Palace and he didn't want to fly with Charles to wherever Charles was going. I don't know if it uh, the Sandrium vis uh, a, a state or something like that. But the funny thing that I see here that they put let me read this part. I'm not going to read everything. Prince Harry did not fly with King Charles to the Sandrium estate during his cancer visit because reports indicate that Harry was only making a brief private visit to see his father. This part is correct. This part is sort of correct because the following day, he had engagement with, uh, I think, uh, with the NFL or something, the award that they were giving, where the guy, what's the name, um, the football player called Harry, this is uh, Prince freaking Harry, 
all right, that he was going to go to Las Vegas. So that's why he did not fly with Charles to wherever. And apparently the reason he did not also stay at the location that Charles had offered him was due to the fact that there was no secure. The area was not secure. So anybody could come in anytime. There's no, it's, it was not secure. So Harry did not stay there and um, he either flew right back. I don't even think he stayed in the UK after he met his father because the following day he was already in Vegas. So I don't even think he stayed. So, and the other thing that was flying around, which I've said already, the area that Charles had offered him to stay, it was not secure. So that was the, the thing, the information that was coming out during that time but now i'm looking for those information i don't even see it even this part that i highlight here I, it took me a while to find it because it was not showing up when i asked straight away the type of question uh did harry stayed uh why harry did not fly to uh, the syndrome with charles when he visit you know i sort of questioned it uh, differently i didn't find that it took me a while this one is the only one that's somewhat close to what I was aware of. Okay, he was making a brief private visit. And then here, this is the answer this one is saying here. Prince Harry was forced to stay in a hotel as aid reportedly worried they will, quote, never get rid of him, end quote, if he lodged at Sandrium while visiting the king. Harry didn't even want to go. He didn't even fly over there even at buckingham palace they offer him he didn't even stay so this is very troubling the nonsense that's coming out over there switch the information completely that was not the information that came out during that time okay so the following day harry went to vegas to give the award to uh that i forgot what was it i have videos about it anyway Okay, you could go and check it out either on our Pure Team Sus, no, not app, our part of Pure Service or Pure YTE. Anyway, I just wanted to share this part because the information is not, in other words, they changed the information. Only this one that came close to what I was looking for based on my memory. All right, so let's get back to the original recording. Okay, who knows what they were going to do? Okay, so they had a plan for him. And when Heavy said, no, he's not going, so Charles dashed off, uh, took his airplane, or not airplane, his helicopter, and left. I, I don't think he has cancer. All right, so let me leave it as that. Let's go to the next tweet. Not recorded. I don't know what is that. Oh, okay, so this, this is something I didn't share when I saw that. Uh, it's a GIF. It's only two seconds. Did it start further up? There they are here again. Okay. Oh, I didn't know it was a thread. Okay. I cover this already. Okay. So, ah, okay. I covered this already. I share some of these already. This as well. So not recorded because this I didn't see. This is where I, you know, the reason I'm saying not recorded because this is what I wrote on the side, not recorded. So heavy in South Africa. So this part I didn't record yet. So she probably must have added to the thread she was doing. Okay. So there's no comment here. No, um, let's pick it up here. Okay. Musa Kuzwayo and youth reporter for radio workshop. All right. So that's Harry taking picture with them. Okay. So there's that. Okay, I think the tour is over now. He's probably on his way back home. October 4th. Yeah, he's way, he's already home. Okay, send the Bali return to South Africa. So there's that. Okay, what is that? That's a TikTok. Let's see. Oh, I didn't want to go. It's only 20 seconds and that's from Center Bali. I guess they're showing the event. Okay, the seating arrangement and things like that. The music will change completely, all right? Oh, I wanted to see the menu. Let's see here. 
I wanna read the menu, the thing is not going Okay, there it is here. Starter, special cooking option, okay, main course, beef fillet. Maybe that's what I would have uh, eaten. Okay, big is it? King lip. Alright. Butternut Rosoto. Okay. There's uh, wine, red wine, white wine, and sparkling. Okay. Okay, that's what I wanted to read. Uh, you could read it yourself. Let's continue. Uh, this one was sideways that's why they put it like that okay let me close it so this is the one that was sideways two seconds <laughs> heavy pulling them close all right so we just saw that all right this is the last one alex lubeck thank you at center valley for incredible inspiring few days in lesotho and south africa and the chance to see you and the communities you instagram okay so these are some of the Images center Bali. That's nice. There's heavy in the back. Oh, this is every time I see this, I'm looking at the open space and everything like that. These are the things those people in the Western world want open space and then for them to go and mess it up to take the natural resources all right so that's that there's no comment let's go to the next one peace morgan okay the next one i should have put it right after the other politics what's this about oh uh, are the squad talking about this all right so i put this part here peace morgan is a hypocrite he called the royal family racist in this video clip all right, so let's see here. Quote, the British media and royal correspondent are in the access business. The royal family and British media are codependent institution. That is Harry and Meghan's fundamental point. They always draw the low card and the shuffle between the palace and the press. There's more comment here. And she responded to him here. Steve Smith. That's some, he's in the U.S. That was back in 2023. Why did this pop up here? He said it. He's on the payroll now. His unhealthy obsession with Megan is creepy. And then he flipped for money hypocrisy straight from the horse's mouth. Morgan has so many faces. He's like a 50 pence piece. He's just a massive misogynistic hypocrite. Maybe Megan should have continued to stroke his, okay, this man's ego and kept the king gunman on side. All right, let's listen to this. It's only eight seconds. Meghan's marrying into a family which has, to put it mildly, a dodgy track record on race. It's not Meghan Markle's problem, it's their problem. Meghan's... Oh, that's old. Let's leave that alone. Mm. Next one, that was back in 2023. Alright, there's this one here. For 32 years, I'd watched the conveyor belt, faces pass by, and only a handful ever made me look twice. This woman stopped the conveyor belt. This woman smashed the conveyor belt to bits. I'd never seen anyone so beautiful, Prince Harry. I, for those who are new, when I saw this, I actually went and get the, uh, how do you call this? The link of the video that I made out of his audio. Okay, him talking about Megan. It's, I turned it into like a, a, a music video. So for the sake of this video, let's listen to him talking about his wife. Screenshot. World from top to bottom, literally. I'd hopscotched the continents. I'd met hundreds of thousands of people. I'd crossed paths with a ludicrously large cross section of the planet's seven billion residents. For 32 years, I'd watched a conveyor belt of faces pass by, and only a handful ever made me look twice. This woman stopped the conveyor belt. This woman smashed the conveyor belt to bits. Harry is like a poet. He's describing, you know, him looking at his wife, how he described it in his book, Spare. It's like a poet. Poetry. I've never seen anyone so beautiful. Why should beauty feel like a punch in the throat? Does it have something to do with our innate human longing for order? Isn't that what scientists say? And artists? 
that beauty is symmetry and therefore represents a relief from the chaos. Certainly my life to that point had been chaotic. If you go back um, to when did his book come out? 23, 2023, when I, you know, everybody was talking about it. One of the things that I brought up is regarding when he's talking about symmetry, chaotic. You know, Megan's face is so symmetry, symmetrical. It looks so perfect where your eyes is fixed. And I sort of make a distinction between that with uh, architecture, uh, Roman architecture, there's the symmetry, the wall and your eyes. Um, just go back to some of those uh, videos that I did back then when around the time when Spare came out. I talk about this and I made the distinction as well how the royal family like things to be in order where they need to know what comes first second third so this is why they all into people's business because when things when people are doing their own things it drives them crazy because they want to know but I don't know why they want to do that it's just crazy mindset in a way where because they're not authentic with themselves the things that they want to portray for people to see them as so in order for them to model themselves for people to see them they have to know what something i don't know why they feel like they need to know about other people's way of life in order for them to shape theirs when they could just go about their business and forget about you know mind their own business okay so when things when they don't know things things are moving in different direction and i give examples of let's say for instance uh the public is uh i think i use Times square where there's so many people these drive them crazy because they they will need to know where everybody's going that way they could shape themselves in a certain way i don't know this that's what came out of me uh, when i was listening to harry talking about the chaotic and the symmetry and all of that but anyway go back to some of my old videos on pyte let's continue here i can't deny hungering for order can't deny seeking a bit of beauty i just come back from a trip with pa willie and kate to france where we'd marked the anniversary of the battle of the somme honored the british dead and i'd read a haunting poem before action. It was published by a soldier two days before he died in action. It ended, help me to die, O Lord. Reading it out, I realized I didn't want to die. I wanted to live. Hmm. A fairly staggering revelation for me just then. But this woman's beauty and my response to it wasn't based merely on symmetry. Hmm. There was an energy about her a wild joy and playfulness. There was something in the way she smiled, the way she interacted with Violet, the way she gazed into the camera, confident, free. And this is what we're looking at here as well, confident and free, the way she's looking into the camera here, especially that one. Yeah, that person who put this together pretty much described what Harry's saying here. She believed life was one grand adventure I could see that. What a privilege it would be, I thought, to join her on that journey. I got all of that from her face. Yeah. Travel it, the world. It makes sense. He wanted to join her journey because Megan had that. Before all of this came out, if you look at some of my old videos on PYTE, where I think I, what term did I use? Um valley girl type of lifestyle you could see the joy they enjoy life you know that's the thing that i saw on megan not knowing her that much i know her existence but i was not following her but when you look at her you see the valley girl type of you know carefree lifestyle let's look it up valley girl do youtube has the meaning of valley girl if it's the same way that i see it let me look it up Exactly. Okay. A fashionable and affluent teenage girl from the Valley in Southern California. But that's what I had in mind for her. For her. I don't know how she lived her life in, um, in California as a teenager. But it seems like she had fun. But for some of the clips that came out 
when she was in high school where she saw that uh, young shy uh, classmate and she wrote her a note and I believe that lady uh, still has the note that Megan gave her and it brought her confident out so I don't know that's what I saw when I started looking into uh, Harry and Megan and then there's Harry saying, you know, I would love to join that journey with her. And I think uh, the brother made that possible for him. You know, get the hell out of here. We don't want her here. And Harry was like, okay. But there it is. They're having and enjoy themselves. Look at this. She looks like she's getting younger. All right. Let's see some. Oh. Oops. Oh, there's only one comment. That's sweet. Women have this power, absolutely, and we can use it anytime. So it's the one that use that power to really help others. If you call, if you call self humanitarian, Megan Marco seems to be opposite of that cosplaying. Diana is definitely purposeful, really triggering. Megan was doing so much more before meeting Harry. All right, so let's leave that alone. Uh, yeah, that's it. There's no comment. All right, so this one I saw. No wonder they wanted her to be 50% of herself. This is Megan. When she comes out of the house after 15 days of not being seen, Megan, she is that girl. Indeed. Okay, I'm glad I put this fight after the other one. Okay, this is how you break the internet. Two days on and she's still trending. Yeah, I was seeing a lot of things about her with the red dress. Articles talking about her re-wearing that dress again and all of that. Okay, oh look, Willie Leaks, no jewelry, that's for sure. All right. In my country, Chile, the news was also published. You can add it to your collage. Okay, Megan Marco. Okay, so the rest is in Spanish. There's that here. Okay, even I am shocked at the coverage and so happy. Every single outlet I can think of pay homage to her and so beautiful little. They are dying inside now that the former British Prime Minister has spoken highly of Meghan, like I was sharing with you at the beginning of this video, killing all the lies said about her. After praising Harry and Meghan on GB News, Boris Johnson was on LBC with Nick Ferrari this morning praising Meghan's intellect to the roof. That's the one that I share with you. And I was like, oh, why did I have this here? Pretty much is the LBC one. All right, let's pause this. Oh, there's a video someone else is talking about. All my content is on TikTok things. Check box here. A lot of hashtags. So let's listen to this. A minute and 31 seconds. Let me go into it so it could be bigger. Morning guys, this is what's known as the domination of global media coverage. And I put this little montage together. That's a good word, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I put this little montage together just to demonstrate how much the red dress episode affected global media all over the world. If you stop this video, I'll save the image and then zoom in on it. You'll see that I've chosen titles from basically everywhere across the globe. This is global domination of the media on an unprecedented scale from Megan. And I wanted to put this up there because not everybody realizes, particularly some of the more favored royalists in the comments, not everyone realizes just how much pull this lady has when it comes to the global media. And that's why the causes that she works for notice that word work mm -hmm. get so much media coverage this is why she's so skilled at shining a light on the things that the world needs to be talking about exactly because the global media follows her exactly and because they follow her they follow any causes she attends mm -hmm. have a look and for this is, yourself it's and this is the thing harry's saying he understand his position People want to see him, so he bring in all those other charities with him. New spin on it from the, from the youth. As a prince, you have your born at birth with a natural platform to be able to try and make a difference. Yeah? Which a lot of people have to spend years and years and years getting to that point. So from that, that perspective, I'm very lucky to have a platform to be able to try and make change in the causes that mean a lot to me, but also to you guys. And I, I'm still in your generation, by the way. <laughs> but at the same time, as I said, being born with a lot of privilege comes a lot of, with, with a lot of responsibility. But I like to think that I'm, you know, I'm going to have to spend the rest of my life earning the respect for that privilege and trying to make a difference for the rest of my life. And this is why the travelist which he created is doing so well. People want to get on board with him. Okay? 
and then the others are just instead of they have the same platform but if they were using it for good they will have the same type of spotlight but they refuse to do the right thing so that's on them god please continue to protect harry and megan any causes she attends have a look for yourself it's all varied coverage it's all hugely positive not only focused on her looks which obviously she looks absolutely fabulous but also talking about why she's there what she's doing and what other people can do to help have a brilliant tuesday guys catch up with you tomorrow okay and the thing that she was at is for the children hospital of los angeles so people's talking about her guess what we're talking about children hospital as well the work that they do for the kids as a matter of fact if you watch what's on um the two olympians um husband and wife oh my god i'm telling you there are times i'm perfect with names i uh, i will come up with the names right away hunter hunter and what's the wife his white and the wife is black they both went to the paris olympic they both won gold for their respective you know things their competition um the last uh, episode that i saw on their channel is that hunter went back to the hospital that uh helped him as a child okay so this is another thing bringing spotlight to things that matters when the media is following them and i thought that was very nice and he brought uh, his wife over there to show uh, her you know the hospital that uh, took care of him and i think some of the doctors are still there okay so that was a very positive thing they did with their channel okay uh megan effect queen of heart i love that she has some of her natural texture back too uh, right but for all the wrong reason for you it is but highlighting children hospital let's black this while i can if you cannot see why she had uh she went over there uh who did i just black here on black who did i just black here okay this is the one i want to black okay uh, we always knew that they were afraid of her popularity. Oh, well, they should have figured out how to use it to their advantage. Now, instead, they are left in the dust. That's for sure. All right, so let's go to the next tweet. I almost skipped one. All right, this one. Oh, my God, there's Harry here. They are a mess. Look at Megan's small piece, but she still shares it with Harry, and it's like she knew. She then even had to look or ask. He was ready. So much for real. This type of love. All right. 20 seconds. I have a video. I think I put it last. Uh, a random person. A random video that I came across. And I thought I'd share it with you. And this just crossed my mind as I'm uh, reading this. 20 seconds only. <laughs> Kid Harry's mouth. There's a music in the back, but anyway, I muted. I mean, Harry could have taken from that. Look at him. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there's my comment here. Uh, can't let a good seasoned food passes by when there's plenty in front of him. This is a prince who used to eat over his paz, with apostrophe S, paz sank, which I didn't do. This is a prince who used to eat over his paz sank for the millions they are taking from taxpayers. They didn't treat Harry well at all, from clothes, shoes, dwelling, and food. Houses save him. These are pictures of different areas that he went, he's eating, all right? Oh, for the sake of this video, let's show. There's that, uh, I think for the Together cookbook, look at this. He's not letting it go by. You know, took some with him. I don't blame him. There he is eating. Yeah. He's not messing around. There's food in front of him. You're gonna eat. Yep. <laughs> Even here, there's Prince Yoso. He's not letting anything go by. Look at his face. Do I need to try this? That what is that? Oyster. It looks good though. Uh, look at the kids. All right. So that's that. Well, I'm surprised. Thirty-two people like it, and there's no more comments. Okay. Next tweet. 
Okay, so it started here. Oh, I'm going to read this article. Oh my God, I completely forgot. Okay, let's start it from... Okay, I bookmarked this. Heavy said he'd Archie had no hair for five months, but Megan told him she had taken him to the playground and there were other children there with the same amount of hair or even less. <laughs> oh my God, that's what happened with new parents. They got worried about the minuscule of things. Has that the ancestors genes really said, now watch me grow. <laughs> my god the squad the ancestors genes really said now watch me grow let's just hope by the time he's uh, an adult he kept his flocks his little hair okay ginger babies are bald for a long time i know oh lol i'll come to that there's an article do i have it open yes i do have it open but it started here from the 2019 Well Child Award where megan and another mom reassured prince harry about archie's lack of hair too Quote, Archie and Lily have been blessed with their mother's thick hair. He told us he marveled, he marveled that it won't be long until Lily can sit on hers. Okay, Hello Magazine, Town and Country. So that's the one that I, let's see here. Town and Country is one of those uh, articles he gave access to when he was in New York for the travelers. And they were introducing him. Oh, let me pause this so I don't get flagged for it. Uh, he, what is it? The assistant introduced him to three. Town and country, people. What was the other one? There's one more. Hey, Vanity Fair, country, people. Hey, Vanity Fair, country, people. Hey, I don't remember. Town and country, people. I don't remember the, the third one. Okay. Megan Marco confirms that baby Archie has red hair like his father, Prince Harry. Okay. You can see it in his eyebrows. So that was 2019. This is old. That was back in 2019. Okay, his eyebrow. Okay, that's the old one I didn't see. Let's see. Baby Archie just turned five months old and hit another important milestone. Megan and Harry's son recently attended his first playground class in Windsor. Quote, I just took Archie for his first playground class, Megan said at the annual Well Child Award in Central London this evening. It was a, a lot of fun. He loved it. Can you imagine? I mean, well, I'm glad where they are. They are happy now. But it's one of those, you make the best of what you had, you know? So they were making things work while they were in the, in the UK, despite the unnecessary burden they were giving them. Okay, it's nice to look back. So that was back in 2019. The Duke and Duchess spoke with 11-year-old Millie Sutherland and her mom, Angela, 50, at the reception for winners of the award. And after their conversation, Angela said, Megan took him to one of these baby classes today. And she said they had loads of fun together. She said it was really good fun. Okay, these are the things interact with the people, you know the people meaning that her taking Archie to those classes meeting other people they will feel you know part of feel comfortable and things like that get to know Harry and Megan and stuff like that Harry and Megan talk with Miley Sutherland and her mother Angela at the World Child Award okay so that's them okay all right the mom and daughter from Liverpool also asked the couple whether Archie has red hair Okay, Megan said he has, and Heavy said he definitely has. You can see it in his eyebrow, Angela said. She added, Heavy said he'd had no hair for five months, but Megan told him she had taken him to the playground, and there were other children there with the same amount of hair or even less. At the event, Miley received the Most Caring Child Award for protecting her sister, Sophie, who had uh, Icardi syndrome and tragically passed away in 2018. Aww. May she rest in peace. Wow. Archie was most recently seen publicly with the royal tour at Southern Africa. Here he is meeting Archbishop Desmond Tutu. May he rest in peace as well. This is one of those images that uh, um, he could, you know, cherish. I don't think he remembered this as a toddler, but at least there's this picture to say, yeah, I met uh, 
uh, when I was a toddler, or not even a toddler, when I was a baby, I met uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And that's something Lily then did not have the opportunity because she didn't born yet. May he rest in peace. Same as that little girl that they mentioned who passed away in 2018. Was it this? Um, so Sophie. Sophie, her. Okay, during this evening, oh my God, Ford Fiesta, her name, Sophie. I can't think of it earlier. Oh my God, this is what I mean. Sometimes I, I just can't remember stuff. So her name, Sophie, Ford Fiesta, at the beginning of this video. All right, during this evening reception, Harriet Megan also spoke to 10-year-old Amy Nawayan Nicholas, who won an award for her idea, Amy's Kitchen. Amy from Manchester was diagnosed with leukemia in 2017 and while being treated in the hospital, she envisioned a place where parents of sick children can meet and chat while enjoying a three-course meal. Amy's Kitchen has now fed roughly 1,500 people. Wow. This is why different minds have different uh, ideas. Wow. Okay, we were thinking of what we could do to help the hospital out because they helped me, Amy said. She also described meeting Harry and Megan as cool. Amy's mother, Eve, was a bit more vocal about her experience speaking with the royal, sharing that the Sussexes were really nice and really down to earth. Everyone who meets them always have positive things to say. Let's pause this so I don't get fly. All right, this one on the side, I'm going to cut, shrink the the screen anyway she because there's something playing on the side uh she added quote i come from a mixed race family so for me megan makes a difference to my world because she's somebody who looked like me who's married into the royal family that's the thing the royal family did uh mess up so many people in the uk mm. they they I, I don't know then again many you know what? Let me not go there. I guess for my child, it's somebody as a role model and inspiration for her that she's a strong mixed race woman who is part of the establishment. When I was growing up, that didn't exist. That's the part that the royal family pretty much eliminate. Harry and Megan told Amy that they love the idea of her kitchen. Quote, they were very lovely, if said. When she sat down, I said, oh, you, you look amazing and you've just had a baby. He looked at her and went, see, I told you, in a way. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. I'm laughing. It, it, I'm thinking this is a conversation they had before. And then Harry's reassuring her. She looks good, but, you know. All right, see, I told you, in a way that we would, uh, it did feel like they were very down to earth. Watch Harry and Meghan entering the reception below. I'm not even going to play it. You could go look at some old videos uh, on YouTube of that particular event. All right, because I just don't want YouTube to black me. All right, so I read these already. And then there's this from Hello Magazine. Was it Hello Magazine, the third one that uh, introduced Harry at Travelist event? All right, so let's go to the next suite. It's the town and country one I wanted to read anyway. Next suite. And if you want me to put the link of uh, Hello Magazine, just uh, uh, let me know. Put the timestamp, okay? Put the timestamp on uh, uh, where the video is, and then uh, I could go back. When you just say, oh, I want to see this, and it's I do not want to go sit and listen to my videos again okay once i edit it and review it i'm done okay it's up to you to come back and criticize and tell me what you think put the timestamp so i could go straight to it all right so i could go to the link and i this is why i have the list and this is the list that i put on the description and then i could go and straight to it all right next to it uh, i put this twice so i'm gonna remove that Okay, so this is my last video. This is the one that I was talking about. This is husband and wife. Some people are just meant to be together. All right, so it's a minute and 30 seconds. Screenshot in between. Let's listen. Excuse me. Sorry. Are you two a couple? We are. Would you mind telling me the story of how you first met? Hey, I know you. I follow your story. <laughs> no way. And I had always thought, I hope I run into that guy because it's such a great story. Let's hear it. Oh, man. In my hardware store. We had a, it's, well, I stole it away from her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> I did meet him more formally in the hardware store. Yeah, 
that I was with my boyfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I really hope I meet someone like her. Not gunning for her, because like she embodied so much, but I was also like, she's with somebody. But then as it turned out, it was destined to be her. And, um, I felt the same. I was like, oh, this guy's so nice. My boyfriend is such a <laughs> why am I with him? <laughs> so we've been together 15 years. 15 years. We married 10. Yeah. So it clearly was the right decision. What's your favorite thing about him? He's still... I love her smile. I'm, I'm moving it back slightly. Right here. I love her smile. You could see they just chill. Uh, but I move it back further. Let's listen. Oh my God, look at his smile here. Oh my God. So we've been together 15 years, 15 years. married 10. Yeah. So it clearly was the right decision. What's your favorite thing about him? We still love to have fun together. I think like finding someone that you can still feel like a kid with even as you get older is super important. What's your favorite thing about her? Fearlessness. Just gives me so much strength when I... Look at her. Look at her as uh, he's talking about her. That is so nice. I feel like I am at my weakest sometimes. It's so easy to just um, uh, lean on her and be reminded um, that I can do anything. What are your names? I'm Liza. And I'm Joe. Okay, so that's that. This is why it's important to attract instead of seek. Yep, there's a thumbs up. Seeking often involves forcing things, and forcing things in general is no bueno. All right, there's the loving eye. The way she looks when he talks about them. Yep, I saw that too. Side note, that's the best beard I've ever seen. Yeah, he trimmed it very well. I love their love story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A G-I-F. To be loved. Is that from Coming to America? That's Eddie Murphy. I can't believe it. You see, this is what I mean with my brain sometimes. Of all things, I remember this. Coming to America. Okay, Kaliko. Okay, I cannot read that. Someone I can have fun with. Someone I can feel like a child with. Noted. Oh, read. Okay, well, that's just wonderful to see. Until she gets bored with them. I mean, they've been there for 15 years. She said it. So they're having fun. They feel like a kid. They enjoy things. This will never diminish. Especially if you enjoy the things you're doing with him. Like me and my husband. I mean, we there's so many things we do together. Uh, hiking. We do a lot of outdoor stuff when we have the time and things like that. And, oh my God, I don't even want to go to my kids. My youngest already asking to go back to Maine. This is why we wanted to take them. And I think this was going to be the... Because they're growing up. We've done Maine like... This was the third time as a family we did. We took my youngest when he was a toddler. Um, my oldest, I mean. We took my oldest when he was a toddler. And we took um, uh, my... No. First, we took my oldest when he was a baby. And the second time we went, he was a toddler. And my, uh, my youngest was a toddler i remember him crying when we went hiking he didn't want to go hiking um and then the third time now they a little bit older they will remember so we thought okay they're getting older who knows we may not have a uh, you know go back again uh, before they start doing their own thing and the week i think the second or oh, the first week of school when they went back to school, my youngest was telling me, oh, when he was at school, he was uh, thinking about what the things that we did when we were in, um, in Maine. So he wants to go back again. I just love it. The only reason I'm not moving over there is because during the winter, I don't think I could deal with the snow, the amount of snow. It's freezing. But besides that, I just love it. The outdoors, everything. I just love it. Okay, so once you have a partner who enjoy the things that you you enjoy, sometimes it could be you just sitting out there, you one of you putting your feet on to the other, you just talking or just you know enjoying the weather. Some minor things. It's nothing extravagant. Once you enjoy each other's company, which is what life is about, to enjoy other people's company. And there's some people who prefer to be by themselves. That's okay too. But if you have a partner who enjoy the things that you enjoy, hey, 
you're not forcing that's the thing here it's when you're going out of your way to make the, the other person happy this is when it become work you're forcing yourself to do things to make the person happy then that's a lot of work so if this is the type of person you are you want to go out of your way to make someone happy hey by all means do but is it authentic is the person receiving it the way that you want your significant order to do it okay when it's natural guess what the person is looking at when he's at work he's looking at his watch when can i get home to enjoy the moment with my significant order all right and that's when uh it's not like when oh my god it's five o'clock i have to go home i have to deal with this i have to no Th you know but everybody's different so that's that i thought i shared that with you so that said for the sake of heavy and megan let's do a prayer what should we do prayer for um prayer for happiness let's just do that for all of us the world in general as well but too many crazy things going on yesterday while i was watching tv and i was putting things you know what's going on with the war and stuff like that my youngest told me can you please change it i don't want to listen to it it got me worried i said okay i changed it all right so i have to remember that when i'm sitting listening to this and he's around not to put it i, I could just put an earphone on and listen to it on my on my phone he let me know that so i respect his that ad. the world has too many things going on not only that this kid my youngest he knows much more when uh, i believe when biden stepped down and said that he's not running he was the one who told me he knew before me all right but anyway let's do a prayer what did i say the prayer would be prayer for happiness i don't know prayer for i'm not gonna put world happiness then it's gonna start giving me world peace well this well that so let's just put happiness but in my mind i'm thinking for the entire world prayer for happiness okay let's read this lord please send me peace through your holy spirit i want to be happy and peaceful in life you have given me in all circumstances your spirit brings peace and i ask for that in the name of jesus christ amen let's just leave it as that okay so that's that please take a moment to subscribe like and share if you want to support this channel there's a paypal link and a cash app link in the description you could donate those who have donated thank you and if you have not subscribed please subscribe and if you want to support my channel another way you could do is by becoming a member or you know i always have the paypal and cash app in the description you could also donate there those have been donating to my uh, paypal i truly appreciate it thank you so much okay so that's it